Hello and welcome to another episode of Country Living with the Wades. This is Deborah and I'm Philip, and we've just made our second raised bed. I hope you enjoy this video and this one will tell you exactly what it cost us uh, by buying the materials in bulk and um, we'll also show you what it would have cost to do the same amount of materials with the uh, average prices of uh, buying it in the bags. All right, so we hope you enjoy this video and God bless you. Deborah and I want to build um, another raised bed because this one did so well, the first one. Uh, we really learned a lot of uh, do's and don'ts uh, with the raised bed, but as far as the construction of the raised bed, it was absolutely perfect. All of our do's and don'ts had to do with when we planted, how close we planted, and those kind of things. They had to do with the plants, nothing to do with the structure itself. So she wanted to put the second raised bed uh, here on this side, and I agree, I think that's the most logical place, uh, leaving just enough gap over there, not necessarily for the for the lawnmower because we'll be walking a lot in between the two. It'll be easy just to weed eat between them. So I've taken the weed eater uh, and this area here, just to sort of mark it out, took the weed eater, cut everything as short as I could because I want to use a tiller this time. On the last one, I used uh, just <laughs> nothing but just a shovel and the matic for the whole process and it was uh, rather labor intensive. Here it is later in the same day. I do have the blocks but it's already rained on me once. I don't know if you can see or not. That's what it's like right now. There's rain over in that direction, more rain over in that direction and so I think I'll just wait. Tomorrow's supposed to be a much prettier day. Earplugs because I like being able to hear and my hat because my dermatologist tells me wear a broad rim hat whenever I'm out in the sun. Well, I guess that's it for the tiller. These are the tools that I'll be using. I'll be using a flat uh, nose shovel uh, because it's easier to square out underneath the blocks and make things level with it than a pointed uh, spade type shovel. Uh, this is a mattock. And you'll notice the difference between a mattock and a pickaxe. A mattock basically has the ax on one side, but has something like a strong hoe on the other side. That's called a mattock. Whereas a pickaxe would have the ax on one side, just like this does, but on this side, you'd have a long pick, and that's all. So this is a mattock, it's not a pickaxe. Then I have my long level to make sure that I do put it in level and make it look pretty. And I've also got a rubber mallet. I use the rubber mallet for lining the blocks up so I don't have to hit them and, and take a risk of uh, cracking the blocks with something harder. You know, it's very important to get the cornerstone in because that sets how the foundation is going to go. And that's what's so important about having a cornerstone in your life. And my cornerstone is Jesus Christ. A hole inspector don't even have the blocks laid out yet and he's already inspecting all the holes well I'm gonna take a quick little break get something cold to drink because it's getting pretty warm out here in the Sun I don't know if you can tell but I'm perspiring as women say or sweating as a man says I'm sweating pretty heavy I've got the first row in lined up leveled so I'm ready to start coming up the sides. I'm a little bit like a hot collared mule. You get me a good sweat, and I've started working, I can keep on working, but if you let me cool off completely, I'm liable to take a very, very long break. I'm going on a men's church retreat uh, tomorrow, so I wanted to make sure I got the blocks laid in today.
I can tell you, I'm not as young as I once was. Well, today is 22nd of September, and uh, like I said yesterday, it was 91 degrees and very high humidity, and the sun was very strong. Hopefully, I'm fixing to get a little bit of cloud cover to help some, but hey, you can even look. My gloves are even all sweaty. That's how much I'm sweating because it's so hot. So I may have to take a few more breaks than what I took when we built this one in February. It got so hot trying to work in the sun earlier today that uh, I was sweating so bad there was no breeze. The sun was extremely hot. But now this uh, front is starting to come through. It's dropped down to about uh, 82 degrees. Uh, the sun is behind some clouds uh, and there's a breeze. So it should be a breeze to finish this. Well, you can tell I didn't get finished with it today. Deborah came home from work and helped me a little bit here in the end to get these leveled out and get the last ones in. But got a lot of other stuff to do this evening, so this will just have to wait until this weekend uh, when we get a chance to work on it again. The whole inspector, though, he's going to go ahead and start his, start his job, I guess. Anyway, um, so far so good. Don't have that much time in there. At least this afternoon it did. Finally, this front is coming through right now. I'm sweaty, so I feel real cool because the air coming in is real dry. And so at least now we have a breeze because, you know, because earlier today it was just so hot. I was just about to get overheated, so I just had to stop. The sun was so hot. It was about uh, 91 degrees. The humidity was very, very high. I didn't get to, to finish the other day. And then I had a men's retreat. I had to leave. Uh, we had to leave out from the church at uh, seven o'clock in the morning on Thursday morning. And here it is uh, Saturday uh, evening. I got back uh, this afternoon. So I'm going to try and finish up at least getting the bottom layer in so that all I have to do is just set the next blocks on top before I start to spread the, the dirt out on the inside. Now it's Sunday after church, and I thought a little bit in this afternoon I could go ahead and fill in the gaps. We've got some pretty good gaps in here all the way around on the back side. I want to go ahead and fill that in level with the dirt on the outside. And uh, the nursery is closed today anyway, and besides, I wouldn't have time. I'm not going to be able to get any yards of mushroom compost or topsoil or anything like that to put in. So I'll just do a little bit today what I can and I've been to the big box store and I've gotten uh, eight 50 pound bags of uh, cement that I'll be putting into the corners uh, and everywhere where I'll be adding in the, um, the base piece to support the hoops that I'll be putting in. 
Um, I also picked up some more one inch PVC that I'm cutting up into eight inch pieces, um, one for each one. And I'll, I'll make sure I'll show you exactly what I'm doing on that. I went by the nursery and I got uh, three scoops. Uh, the, each scoop is a cubic yard, which is uh, 27 cubic feet. Um, and I got two yards of, what is it? Two yards of compost and the compost was $40 a yard and then one yard of topsoil and that was $50 a yard. I was going to use the bandsaw for this, but um, the bandsaw blade broke on me. So now I'm doing it manually, which isn't good. This really gives me clean edges anyway. I've already pre-marked uh, each eight inches on this. This is one inch scheduled 40 PVC. I just stick it straight down into the dry concrete, get it to the right height, and when I have the concrete and all in there, then I add a little bit of water. I don't try to mix the concrete. I just let the concrete get wet and it just gets hard itself. I want the hoops to be a little bit closer than they were on the last one. Um, on the last one, I only have three going down each middle on the sides, but for this, I'll put five on each side. I'll tell you right up front, I don't like messing with concrete. Also putting the concrete in helps tie the uh, top blocks to the bottom blocks. I've got concrete in here almost to the top, but not quite. Let's get this at the right height, poking up about that far. Center, straight center. If you put up a chain link fence and you need to, to hook the fence to, to the rail or something like that, these little clips right here, you buy them in a pack of about 50 in a pack. And what I'm doing is, like I did on the last one, I'm just going to set this down into the, the concrete, the, the dry concrete, uh, before I wet it with this part poking up, you know, with this part poking up right here. And what that does is, if I ever need to have something to hook on to hook onto to hold the, the fabric down or whatever I put over the top to keep the uh, frost out or keep the butterflies out, uh, I ha I'll have something in the concrete right there. I leave it up about one inch above the, above the top of the block and I bring the concrete even up with the top. This is pre-mix, all I have to do is just wet it. There, that's one ready to go. Let me stick this in there. Get a little dip down there underneath. I centered it in the hole, and I have the hook right here. That's not in there very deep, but that concrete will grip it and make sure I've got enough room in there to get my finger under it. I wanted to show you this. I'm at a good break point now. I've got enough uh, covering uh, in on the existing dirt. But I want to begin to blend it in. Now I don't know what you call this, but it's like a hoe, but it's not. It's very, very heavy tines, and it's great for working in uh, dirt, uh, especially thin layers of dirt like I'm about to start here. And you can see it has a very, very heavy handle. It's not a, a thin handle like you would have on a leaf rake. It has a very heavy, solid handle, and the tines are, are very heavy and solid as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've got a little huffing and puffing going on now.
you want to fill it up pretty good because it has a tendency to pack down a little bit. So I'm humped up here in the middle some. I think it'll be okay. Let me put a little more down on this end. Anything I've got left over, I'll just put in the other garden. All right, I think that's full. All I need to do now is just spread it out, wet it down and let it soak in one time, clean up all my concrete uh, papers and my other mess. And uh, I'm gonna call it a day. I don't know if you can see this one very well, but it's packed down a couple of inches uh, since we did it. We completely filled it. I don't know when we planted uh, the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts, maybe five or six days ago. And they were really thin and looked like they hadn't had hardly any sun, but looks like they're taking in pretty well. I think I need to give you a cost breakdown of what everything actually costs me um, and show you with how many cubic uh, feet of soil that I've added into this, how much it would have cost had I used bags from the big box stores. Now I'm just sort of smoothing this out a little bit, just sort of piddling some. I'm going to go ahead and plant some garlic down on the other end uh, this morning, uh, just to sort of get something started in this one. Now this is kind of clumpy and rough, so I'll break it up real fine in the areas where I'll be actually planting today. I'm not going to plant all this today, just a little bit of it. Now you'll notice I have this a little bit over full, which is not a problem. And also, when I got the bulk material from the nursery, you can see I've got quite a bit left over. I have uh, close to a yard left over. Now, I know in his tractor, when he was loading, the, the bucket is rated for one uh, cubic yard. But when he would scoop up, it's actually mounted over. So I know I was getting more than a cubic yard on each scoop. I don't know what kind of compost this is. And to tell you the truth, I'm really not worried about it so much because the compost and all I got last year worked out very, very well. Now the garlic is real easy. I'm just gonna break this open a little bit. Get the outer shell off so I can get to the individual bulbs. Keep as much of the paper on there as you can because that's a protection. Oh, that's a big fat one there, yeah. Let me get this started. I'm just gonna poke them straight in like this. About four inches over each one. Leave the little tips showing so for right now that I can see and then I'll cover them all up at the end. All right. I've got uh, four rows of garlic planted. I'll just drop this other down in there. It's not gonna do anything but rot anyway. We can see all the tops right now, but as soon as I cover them with dirt, we're not gonna be able to see anything. So I need to make sure I've got a marker in here. So I know right there, I'll leave that in there. Yeah, look out nosy, look out nosy, cover them all up now, and I'll pat them down. <clears throat> now, you might see some people say that that you need to uh, cover them with straw or mulch or whatever to keep them from freezing. If you've been watching our videos, you know that we're in LA, that's lower Alabama, and we might have six or seven frosts, or maybe we'll have a actually a week during the winter time where it'll get, get below and stay below freezing. And that's really all I need to do. Just leave them alone until the spring. Let nature take its course. 
All right, this is the cost breakdown I wanted to show you. Our raised bed number two, this is our second raised bed. The inside dimensions were four feet wide, 16 and a half feet long, and 0.83 feet deep. That's about 10 inches. It was just over one block. Uh, and that equals 55 cubic feet. One cubic yard is 27 cubic feet. It took two yards of fill material, 60 concrete blocks, nine bags of cement, and one piece of uh, Schedule 40 PVC. Um, and the total from the construction materials there was $110. Now the compost was two yards of compost at $40 each, that's $80. One yard of potting soil, I know in the video I said topsoil, but actually it was potting soil. One yard of potting soil at $50, uh, that brought my total cost using the bulk materials at $240. Now I bought some extra material because I also wanted to fill the blocks on the side um, and it was just convenient to, to use this material. The construction material cost is going to be the same for the block and the cements, uh, whether you do the bulk or, or not. However, the bag fill is going to be much more expensive. I found a real large difference in the pricing between the brands, so I just made these calculations using some of the most common, uh, one of the most common brands, and that was miracle Grow. So we needed 55 cubic feet, and the ratio that I've got of compost to potting soil is two-thirds compost and one-third potting soil. So using miracle Grow's Nature Care compost, one bag is one cubic foot, and it's $6. And the potting mix is a 16-quart uh, bag, which is uh, one-half of a cubic foot at $8 each. So you can see 36 bags of the uh, compost, um, is uh, $216 and 36 bags of the potting mix is $288. So with the construction materials being the same, $110, the total cost if you use bag materials is $614. So that's a significant difference. Uh, so if you can get the material in bulk from, a, from a, a nursery, then by far that's the least expensive way to go. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to keep them coming. Thank you very much.